Hi, I'm Zan. I'm Mila Kunis. And, and this is everything Mila Kunis eats in a day. <laughs> We're good, Mila. I know you don't like to waste food. It's just not worth the stomachache. They're basically pierogies, boiled potatoes with smoked herring. <gasps> oh no! That was an olive. Not my thing. Here's mommy. Mine is purple. When I first wake up in the morning and I open my eyes, I get up because I have to get my kids ready for school. But on a Monday through Friday, I now have to set an alarm. My kids used to be the alarm where they would wake me up and now they, they don't. My kids wake me up. Such a lie. You don't even know what it means to wake up early. Hello? Hello. It takes me a few snoozes before I wake up. I'm a bad. morning person. Sometimes, or oftentimes, I have to go tinkle. So that's what I do. I go tinkle. Sometimes I brush my teeth before I enter the kitchen. Because once I enter the kitchen, I gotta get their lunches ready, I gotta get their breakfast ready. The first thing I eat when I wake up is coffee. But I do have a very specific way that I like my coffee. So first things first, she likes to make her drip coffee, nothing fancy. And you know what? I actually just love that because I love drip coffee. But my creamer, I'm very specific about. I like the vanilla silk oat milk creamer. Very specific. I think that's enough. Coffee's ready. And she says she pours her coffee in to her creamer, which is kind of backwards for me, but we're doing it. I like the frothiness. Just give it a try. This creamer is very sweet. I normally don't take my coffee sweet at all, no sugars, but this is extremely sweet for morning coffee. But as you guys will learn, she does love sweet things. But you guys might be wondering, Zhang, why are you doing Mila Kunis and who is she? Well, when I first saw her food diaries on Harper Bazaar, I thought, wow, like she eats so much like me. She's a mom of two. She's married to Ashton Kutcher. She was an actress that I grew up watching on that 70s show. So I feel like me and Jackie or Mila have a connection. So I wanted to see what it was like to try her diet, especially since it seems so down to earth and just super relatable. So let's explore what it's like to be Mila Kunis's belly for a day. No. So let's explore what it's like to eat like Mila Kunis for a day. My typical breakfast sometimes is the leftovers that my children didn't eat. So she eats her kids leftovers. I learned a long time ago not to eat their leftovers because I got a massive stomach ache from it. We basically have bread and butter. This is usually what she wants to get in the morning with like a side of fruit. She ate her orange and then there's a banana and then there's also a partly eaten peanut butter jelly sandwich. Just remember how dirty my kids' hands are. Ugh. Very stale and a little salty. <laughs> We're good, Mila. I know you don't like to waste food, but like, it's just not worth the stomach ache. So then, since that's not satiating, she uses whatever bread she has to make an avocado toast. She usually uses like something healthy, organic, with nuts and seeds in there because she has kids. My kids won't go near anything with nuts and seeds in them. And so I try to be a little healthier with like whole wheat sourdough bread that's already sliced like this. And she usually doesn't have time to toast it because she's too busy. Ooh, perfect avocado. So she'll just smash it in there with some everything bagel seasoning. My favorite, this is actually how I normally do my avocado toast as well. I feel like avocado toast is like the universal breakfast nowadays or snack. Even Kylie Jenner has it with honey and red pepper. But then if Mila's feeling feisty, she'll do two eggs with some kind of dip. But since we're gonna be feisty today as well, we're gonna add two eggs. I like doing mine on a cast iron. It fries really well, especially if you oil it up, get the pan nice and hot. We're just gonna let it sit there today. And she also says she likes to use some kind of dip, like hummus, tzatziki. I don't have either one in my fridge, but I do have a really good dip that I love. This is the everything but the bagel Greek yogurt dip. And it's so delicious with an avocado toast. Whenever I'm using this, I like to smash it together so that like every bite has the flavorings in there instead of just sitting on top. I find that it rounds out the flavor much better. 
So when you plop it in hot oil on the cast iron like this, like there's no way that it's gonna stick at the bottom. So you wanna get your pan nice and hot. But I love doing it this way because it almost becomes like a cloud egg. And you get like nice crispy edges on the egg whites and then the yolk is nice and runny. Salt and pepper is key. A little bit of dip. Very similar to my usual breakfast, except for me, I toast my bread and then I put the egg right on top, but this could work too. I'm so used to eating my avocado toast with the egg on top, like I don't really know what to do with an over easy egg like this. Just eating it separately, like a grand slam breakfast. Mm. That's a good breakfast. Now my husband and I are working in, at home, and so if one of us doesn't have an afternoon something or other, the other one grabs food for the other person. Even like a protein smoothie. Hey babe. Yeah? You're responsible for making lunch today, so can you make a protein smoothie? Because I'm a little busy. Just everyone's waiter. Just everyone's <laughs> waiter. Oh, Miss Worker B. Oh, thank you. Mmm. This is delicious. What is it? Chocolate covered strawberry banana protein smoothie. Can you say it regular? You got a chocolate covered strawberry protein smoothie. Chocolate covered strawberry banana protein smoothie. <laughs> chocolate covered banana protein smoothie. <laughs> All right, now I gotta get back to work. Russian meals is like a lot of food. The obvious, you can start with pimeni, you can start with vareniki. You do borscht, which is like a very Russian-y soup. We've never tried pickled watermelon. It's delicious. So I found this ghost kitchen on Yelp and it's a Ukrainian food to go. It has borscht, it has other Ukrainian food that Mila mentioned. So hopefully we can secure this borscht to try. Vareniki, vareniki. So I'm just preparing some of Mila's favorite foods that she mentioned in the video that her mom makes for her. I actually found it at a Russian deli nearby. This is the Verniki. They're basically pierogies, Polish pierogies in Russian. And this was the one that the sweet lady at the deli recommended. But basically we just place it in salted water and boil for like eight minutes. Salted water. Then here we have some boiled potatoes that I'm gonna be trying with the smoked herring. So that's done. We are now gonna try the borscht. Her mom's borscht has beets. However, she said, if you don't like beets, don't eat it. I didn't have a choice because this one appears not to have beets, but I'm sure it'll be good either way. So in the meantime, we're gonna try the boiled potatoes with smoked herring. Sounds like it would be good. Some salt and dill because they put dill in everything. It's a pretty firm white fish. It smells really good. Grab a piece of dill in there. Mmm. Wow. It's a really, really mild flavor. The smokiness from the fish is so complimentary to the dill and then the potatoes is just like very soft and yeah, it's not a combination that I've actually ever tried putting together before. I mean, I've had like niswa salad, but it's so different from this. It's just a really great side dish, I guess you could say, but smoked herring, something I definitely am gonna start buying from now on, because that was really good. The verniki and the borscht are done. I was advised to have both of these with sour cream and of course, dill. This looks like such a good Russian feast. Let's try the verniki. Mm. It's a potato pierogi or verniki dumpling filled with potatoes paired with the sour cream. It has a little bit of like creamy, tart saltiness to it. And then the dill has just like a nice herby addition to the dumplings. I'm really excited for the borscht. I've never had borscht before. I was actually looking forward to trying the one with beets, but maybe I'll have to try making that one day. Mmm. This is my favorite right here. It's so hearty. It's filled with cabbage. I think this is potato. 
but it's just loaded with the vegetables. And then again, the sour cream makes it nice and creamy. And then I just love the addition to dill to everything. So Eastern European or Russian food is not one that I've ever tried before. Out of all of these, I would say the borscht was my favorite, followed by the smoked herring with boiled potatoes. All of the food here is a little bland, but that's not a bad thing because I don't like my food too salty. And I like that I could just adjust the potatoes here. It's almost like a potato salad with um, smoked herring and then the pierogies. I bet the kids would love this because who doesn't like dumplings? All right, but Mila also mentioned one other thing that I couldn't find at the deli, which was pickled watermelon. She really sold it for me, so I'm gonna try to make my own. So I found this recipe for Russian pickled watermelon online. We've got our kosher salt and black peppercorns. And I'm just gonna cook it up to dissolve the sugar and salt with some water. So as the water comes to a boil, I'm gonna prepare our watermelon. So we add the garlic, some bay leaves, and then half of the dill, they wanted like a bunch about this big. We're gonna slice them into triangles. <gasps> what do we do? All right, let's try this again. All right, I mean, not the best, but it'll do. And then we just layer it like so. I'm super intrigued by this because I love anything pickled. And in Vietnamese culture, we pickle a lot of things like daikon and carrot. And the way that we pickle it is a little different. You end up salting the vegetables before. Watermelon is an extremely watery fruit, but we're not pickling it or we're not salting it at all per the directions. And I looked through a few and none of them salted their watermelon. So I do wonder if it's gonna stay crunchy after the pickling. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Oh no! I knew that was gonna happen. Close it up and then we're gonna let it cool and pickle for 24 hours. It looks really pretty. 2,000 years later. All right, we're gonna give the pickled watermelon a try. Okay. Wow, okay, pickled watermelon. It's kind of soft and mushy. Yeah, it's floppy. Usually pickles, I guess they can be floppy like a daikon. Smells like a pickle. Tastes like a sweet pickle. I don't know why, but I get like anise flavor, like the star anise, it's like fennel too. The dill definitely affects it, but because of the sweetness of the watermelon, it's a definitely new taste to me. I don't hate it, but I wouldn't say I love it either. It's something that I'd have to get used to, but I do love pickles. Let me tell you, I love pickles. Pizza? We just did just get a pizza oven, so we made our own pizzas for the first time. My daughter puts pineapple and olives, cheese and tomato sauce, my son likes tomato sauce and a very light amount of cheese. My husband does mushrooms, jalapenos, and olives on his. All right, so we are having pizza tonight and I'm gonna try out some of Mila's favorite toppings that she said that her family loves. We're gonna start with the easiest and I'm just using pre-made dough from Trader Joe's. It seems like something Mila would do. Doesn't strike me as a type that would make her own dough, but hey, maybe I'm wrong. Nothing wrong with that, we're just busy moms. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with her sons first because I know my kids would definitely eat that. So light cheese and light sauce. I always go with Rayo's. You don't need any fancy pizza sauce. This does the job for all. And a little bit of cheese. Simple. My kind of kid pizza. So we also have a pizza oven, but it's a portable one. This is the Breville Pizza Aeolo, and it cooks our pizza in about two minutes. This one, probably a little less because it's so small. Whoa. -ho -ho. Looking good. So now we're gonna try her daughter's. So her daughter, she mentioned, is a pescatarian. She uses an interesting topping on her pizza, a very controversial one, in fact. Olives, I'm not really sure how my kid's gonna like this because they're not a fan for sure, but we're gonna try it out. And the hot topic for pizza, pineapple. I know this looks a little weird, why is it pink? It's a pink glow pineapple and it's what I have right now. So we're gonna use a pineapple on the pizza. I got this at the Japanese market and it was so interesting. This pineapple is actually very subtly flavored and honestly the pink one looks really pretty on here. 
a little crispy. And now we're doing Ashton Kutcher's. So he likes mushrooms, which my husband hates. He does olives, which I'm pretty sure Nate also <laughs> hates. I'm not eating those. <laughs> And then he likes jalapenos on his pizza, which Nate really loves everything spicy, so I think he will like this. Okay, guys, CC roll me. Pizza time. Pizza time. Is it a taste here? test time? Yes, it's a taste test time. CC. Yes. This is your pizza. I want you to try it. All right. I don't want to make pineapple yeah. pizza. You, you like pineapple, pineapple pizza? Mm -hmm. Hey, can you guys put the slime down? What? Thank uh, you. We did the listening. Yeah, you're listening. I don't like mushrooms. Yeah, I we know. eat it. Here you go. Okay, you try it. Test. Put it down. Big bite, big bite. Do you like it? What's on there? Pineapple. Do you like pineapple on your pizza? What else is on there? Pepperoni. No, there's no pepperoni. That was an olive. Do you like your pizza? Happy? I'm okay. <laughs> try it. You I have really to try happy. it. You try have to thing. try it. <laughs> Not my thing. He hasn't had olives or mushrooms in years. What don't you like about mushrooms? The texture. I'm curious about the pineapple one with the olives. Mom, I don't like olives. Mmm. Another bite. Mmm. So you like the pineapple on your pizza? Mm hmm Just like your mom. It's not bad, right? It's kind of salty. Mm -hmm. And then it's sweet with the pineapple. Mm -hmm. Not bad, right? My honest beverage of choice is a glass of wine. The whole family loves poppy. Oh, it's a raspberry rose. Whoa, this is good. I want it this is like raspberry cup. cream soda. And she also has a glass of wine to keep her hydrated. Cheers. Look at mine. Cheers, mommy. Mine is purple. Okay. You can have it. My own. Then they go to bed, and then my husband and I open the freezer and have ice cream every night. It's Thrifty brand ice cream, and it's chocolate malted crunch, and or the Thrifty brand Rocky Road. Now we're headed to Thrifty's to get Mila's favorite ice cream, which she said is the malted chocolate or Rocky Road. But I'll get Rocky Road since that's also Nate's favorite from Thrifty's. My favorite is chocolate. Okay, let's go. Had to go get it. Thrifty's Rocky Road. While I was there, I saw the classic Thrifty's scoop. So I had to get it. So basically you put it in and then you turn it. I mean, every single night they have a scoop of ice cream. Like, that's not a bad deal. I kind of love that routine. I should implement it myself on a cake cone, just because, you know, we're being extra. <gasps> and the thrifty classic scoop. This is Mila's favorite ice cream. Mm -hmm. mm. That's childhood right there. This is 10 out of 10. What a great way to end the night. Maybe that's why she's so happy and down to earth because she likes freaking ice cream. I myself used to get mint chip or like the black cherry one as a kid. I remember there was one time I was so sad. My sister and I walked to Thrifty's with my aunt and as soon as we left the parking lot, my ice cream dropped to the floor. And I will never ever forget that moment. Anyways, let me know if you guys can relate to Mila's food diary because I know I definitely can. She basically eats like a mom and so do I. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Let me know which other food diaries you would like me to create. Comment below and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye.